I was just about to throw these on to get back out in the shop and get some work done. And I picked them up. I just slung them there from yesterday. And look what was underneath it. Now I just smacked it real good and killed it. And it's kind of flopped upside down. But you can see it's still moving. So <laughs> that is the first time I have ever. I've only seen like two or three snakes ever around here. Never inside. Oh my goodness. Check this out, some 20 gauge 304 stainless steel, cutting out a little logo for my buddy Luke Sear at Sirius Metalworks, runs the plasma table manufacturing company there. They make plasma tables. So if you're looking for one, check them out. Good guys over there. And if you buy one of their tables, you're gonna get uh, at least some of the parts on it cut by me. But um, this is a little nameplate uh, thing here for something else he was working on, nothing to do with this plasma table. But we're cutting this at 700 inches a minute, and you can see it's moving on pretty good and pretty nice quality there. All right, guys, here's a quick video for any newbies out there or somebody that may be trying to troubleshoot some issues. Uh, you guys, some of you saw the issue I had where I'm overlaying the footage now of where uh, the follow wouldn't drop all the way down. It was, you know, standing off like quarter of an inch six millimeter above the plate and uh, when I broke my ceramic nozzle by doing a follow or doing a frame with follow turned on and it it actually needed to go off the sheet because it wouldn't fit and when it went off the sheet it dug down grabbed the slats and you know a little carnage on that probably no good and luckily I had a replacement but when I put all that back together it would it would no longer follow so it, it had kind of lost calibration so i had so f1 and then if you go here to this number three self adjustment uh peter says you need to uh do all of these on a regular basis at least once a week and sometimes if even if you change materials it's not a bad idea to do it so in general i had started to lose my cut quality and this is 18 gauge cold gold and it's not bad you know it's not terrible but you can see right on the edge right there if i can get this to get on the right angle you can just see that there's a small there you go a small little burr and uh so by going through this and doing this self-adjustment right here so we're going to do number three and you need to make sure you have some plate underneath it, preferably the plate that you're gonna cut. And just hit enter, and you'll see it's going through this calibration here. And be sure to save it when you're done here. So hit enter again to save it. And uh, I'm overlaying, I, I just cut the, the words of the Cowboys out and it just did an amazing job. I mean, there's nothing like when you feel the backside of your cut uh, and you don't feel anything there. And it looks almost identical to the front. You can't even hardly tell the difference between the front and back. I was getting, I was getting that before. And over time, I saw a sort of 18 gauge, you know, 16 gauge or 1.6 millimeter uh, carbon steel. I was getting really good results on those. And I started to have where you know it would degrade and i would get that burr same thing this is 16 gauge cold rolled or i'm sorry stainless mill finish and i don't know if that's showing up but it's got the same thing a little tiny burr and i no matter what i did on focus or anything else it it never mattered so i wanted to put this video up for you guys uh and i'm going to put it in the uh
All right, here's a little look at what we just cut out there. I've cut a few of these trying to get the parameters dialed in a little bit better. I have some really good parameters for eighth inch flat sheet. And um, so I'm not sure what the best you can get on this is. It seems like, you know, with this being so small that on the ends, you know, as it's cutting, it's blowing back to the other side. And when it gets to the other side, it's already heated up and there's slag and sludge already up against it. Seem like there's some of that going on. You see these holes right here, they're not too bad. Um, normally this little stuff right here comes off pretty easy. You see that just flakes off. Same with this. So, um, but as far as accuracy, it's supposed to be eight inches long and pretty close there. I think it's cutting right on the line on both of them. So I need to probably compensate for the kerf there on that. And then the holes are supposed to be what, five, six, three, I think they were. Let's see. Yeah, get it where you can see it. So five, six, seven, five, seven, seven, five, seven, eight. So I probably need to compensate for those two. Looks like about five, seven, eight. So a little offset on that. And then uh, I noticed that the they're not centered up. You can see they're off to the left on that side and off to the left on that side a little bit too. So I think uh, one of the guys on the Peter on the Ninja forum is saying that if you calibrate your B center or the center of the axis when you're calibrating it, if you have a larger tube in there with square corners, you'll get a much more accurate reading and get it to hit the center better. All right, again, this is some 20 gauge, 304 stainless steel. Cut down some name tag links for a buddy of mine named Chris Underwood. And uh, shoot these up for him. And here's a look at what he is using for using his CO2 marking and engraving laser. Name tags for one of his customers. And next up, we're cutting out some aluminum target uh, templates so that targets can be sprayed, spray painted for the Fort Worth Axe Company. And this is a project that I did for Cody over at Cody Crafted. So had fun hanging out with those guys for the day. And cut a couple of those and some other logos and things that you see there. So thanks Cody. Again, more aluminum cutting out here. And this is for Patrick Ford, who is uh, a guy up in Kentucky that makes quite a bit of metal art, metal signs. Uh, he's got a CNC plasma, but has me cut some aluminum things for him on certain projects when he needs fine details and so forth and uh, see it's uh, getting cut out here 90,000 to aluminum and we went ahead and
All right, guys, check this one out. This is going to be a really cool one here. Wait until you see how it turns out at the end. Uh, this is some 3 sixteenths uh, pickled in oil steel. And this is a, going to be a sign going out to a repeat local customer at uh, some hunting cabins at a hunting lodge. Uh, if you guys remember, I don't know, about a year ago or so, I made them a very large, like 10 foot wide sign that went on the end, end of one of their cabins and then made several signs going inside and outside various cabins that you know, with different, different designs on them and so forth. But they asked me for something new and they sent me kind of a, an example picture of what they were kind of wanting. And of course, like most everything we try to do around here, we uh, made it look as good as we could and as cool as we could for them. And uh, people on Facebook and Instagram have just had a fit over how this thing turned out with the uh, candy copper kind of looking like wood uh, for the stock and so forth. But uh, I got a little bit of trash in that stock and man, it just annoyed the crap out of me. But it just looked so good overall and they were in a hurry for it. So I didn't have time to go back and wet sand and buff it out. But you'll see a little bit of trash in the stock. And, um, but overall, it just was a pretty slick design. I'm gonna, I've had a couple other people order these and uh, in a cheaper version, which is just gonna be a single layer and out of 11 gauge and uh you know to get the price down because this this one here is four hundred dollars and i wanted to try to get something that you know was in the you know 75 to 200 dollars range so 75 for just a metal cutout and 150 if you want it painted matte black and uh so just look for that in future videos but let's get on to the end of it now uh here where you can see how this thing uh turned out really cool All right, those of you guys that do metal art and do the grinder work and the candy paint and all that might find this one interesting. Um, something I've started doing on aluminum is uh, go ahead and do an engrave on uh, what you're going to cut. So I've got this on the pink layer and we got it set up with an engrave routine that looks like that. And we'll just go ahead and cycle start it now. Alright, so without stopping the program or losing the home position, I'm just going to back this out of the way so I can get the grinder in there. So let me grind it real quick and then we'll show you that. All right, well, you can see the grind on it right there. So after that's done, we are gonna uh, return it home and then change the layer. To the cut, we should already have loaded. So we'll just hot out all of that and take it back to the green layer. So it should be green now and Cycle start it and do the cut. O90 aluminum, cutting at 170 inches a minute. But you get the idea. Here's one I did earlier. guys <clears throat> well you saw the grinder work there and just a, another kind of a cool way to use the engraving feature on the laser uh, to do that 
and uh, you can see I got materials in everywhere uh, some tin gauge in the back of the truck there and some oxygen bottles for the laser uh, a bunch of aluminum and 16 gauge and 14 gauge cold roll a quarter inch 4 by 8 plate there but let's go take a look at these uh, at that laser uh, job with the grinding and I, I literally took it right off of the laser did nothing to the back of it and brought it out here to paint and uh, so let's take a look man I hate to see that door cracked open hopefully nothing got in my paint job so all this right here is for for a church and uh, kind of a little bit of a candy fade on on that one with the blue and it's got some wording that'll be bare aluminum on that and then this identity thing has got three or four pieces but you can see the grinding work in the candy candy red this is a new shade of candy red that is uh i think it's uh called fire red or something but it's got kind of an orange kind of a brighter look to it but that'll show up even more in the in the sun or in certain lights the grinder works so but one last thing i wanted to show you right here is um I know I got a mess. I've had some masking on another job earlier in the week. And you see, I just ripped it off through the floor and just left it there. That's how things are going around here. So we're gonna shut the light off. But let me show you. Here's our fan. See, it's got a little red on it. And right here is the, is the switch uh, for the fan to turn it on. And look though, if you look right, Yeah, look at that swarm of yellow jacket nests up in there. Let me uh, zoom in where you can see this good. Take a look at these bad boys just, just lurking there. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And right there is the, the switch. And I didn't even notice it for, for days. I was reaching over there, powering that thing on every day. And, um... But we're about to go in the shop and see if we can get some stuff done. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hit these bad boys with some of this and then we're gonna take off running and go from there. Oh yeah! Man, they started flying like crazy. Woo. One got me the other day. I grabbed one of those ladders from out there. And uh, Don Ella, the talented and cute forklift driver, was here with me. And I was working on this air conditioner. And there was a nest under the bottom rung of the ladder. And I had these flip-flops on. I stuck my foot under there, kind of trying to position the ladder. And, uh, man. So, all right, guys. Just uh, some stuff about the what's going on in the shop. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one.